Hello, my name is Ghost, and today I thought we'd go over the patch notes for December 2017. Uh, there'll be a few other things kind of uh, mixed in between it, and we'll kind of just go over the patch notes, and then we'll dive more in depth into certain things that have been written and not written, because not everything that we found was actually included on the patch notes, uh, but we'll be going through all of that today. So um, essentially from this point up, uh, most of the patch notes specifically focus more on single player and the environment in itself and a nice little uh, feature about the lobbies. Uh, but we'll go from there and then we'll actually get into what this game this was focused on as well, which was a board nerf. Uh, but we'll get into that when we get there. So when creating a game, you can now choose the difficulty of each AI and the hostility of Northgard separately. Long story short, you can pick the difficulty of the neutral tiles or neutral camps, and you can now also pick the difficulty of the neutral clans that you are fighting, i.e. the opposing AI. But that is now separate from the Northguard uh, neutral camps like the Draugrs and Wolves. When creating a free-for-all game with AI players, the AI will now be placed on Northguard randomly. In previous versions, the AI was always uh, grouped together. Long story short, everything was a giant mess up here, and you were kind of separated. Now you were also part of that giant... Uh, mess essentially so you are not uh, isolated you actually have to uh, compete and interact with the AI we change the way victory is displayed when winning when on the winning team ie not me the game now congratulates every member of the winning team so essentially when you win a game it says congratulations to all team members on the winning team um, and it says sorry losing team get good it should add that but you know we'll talk about that later this one was a little bit weird for me personally because after about 400 hours of Northguard, you sort of develop a, a muscle memory for the only hotkey in the entire game, which is the B button, which allows you to open the build tree. Uh, in this case, they have changed the way the escape button works. Escape will close each active window and only then open the menu, i.e. the little side panel bar that says, oh, you know, sound, enter, exit, quit the game, concede, whatever. Um, it's a little bit weird because they changed essentially the only hotkey in the entire game besides the control groups. Um, B, at least for me, has always been to open and close the build, uh, the build menu, and for the longest time it wasn't the end of the world, but, you know, after, again, 400 hours, you're used to just spamming the B key just to see how much wood until you need to get that woodcutter's lodge. Now it's B, escape, B, escape, B, escape, instead of B, 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 you know, but whatever. That's just kind of the ramblings of a, of a madman. When someone is kicked from a lobby, they will not have the possibility to re-enter the lobby. So when you are trying to host your war chief or higher matches, you and you kick the the villager that joins in, they will not be able to join back in out of spite because you kick them for being a villager. You can finally kick people and they won't come back even against their own will. Um, I did notice though when you kick someone from the lobby, and we did actually have a guy when we were uh, playing, uh, we as in um, only Rex and Mars Echo and myself. Uh, we kicked a guy, and they were, <laughs> surprisingly enough, a villager, and they tried to rejoin in about 15 or 16 different times. Um, on the, the chat panel, it actually said their name, has entered, has left, has entered, has left. It's a little bit annoying. It's kind of weird just to see this guy try excessively to try and join in a lobby that they obviously can't. Um, but I don't need to know that they tried about 16 different times. It's a little bit weird, and especially if you're trying to have a conversation and you have, has you know, Ghost has entered. Hey, how are you guys doing? Oh, pretty good. Ghost has left. You know, oh, how's how's the kids? Ghost has entered. Ghost has left. It's like eh, it's a little bit too much. When someone leaves the game, they will be replaced by an AI after five minutes. If the player reconnects, he will take back control of his clan. The AI difficulty is scaled on the hostility of Northgard. We will talk about that one, but let's get down to the important bit and why all of you guys are here. The Borg clan changes. So. Last week, we fixed a few bugs on the bartering knowledge. Bartering now grants plus two in crowns instead of plus three. Um, Nature's Gift only grants you plus one for every eight and not every five. And the Menders now grants plus one lore instead of plus two. So instead of having plus four lore for having Menders, you now only have plus two for having both of them. So these are pretty big. This is actually a really big change because currently Boar Clan is very dangerous with their all-ins. And... I do like this this decision to make them essentially not a scarier wolf clan, um, but the problem is, and we'll get into this because I believe they no they didn't actually add. I oh know there's 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 more. Okay, there's, there's there's more. Don't worry, we'll get to that stuff later. Um, uh, the problem is now that Boar Clan doesn't have this incredibly early game strength. What do they have? 
their early game, their their strength comes in their ability to pop out, you know, 11 or 12 units or warriors in a very quick, you know, 802 spring, uh, and then have like plus 16 or 17 damage on those guys. So they're they're very powerful. But you remove that, the only thing that they can do is essentially trade and try and go for a lore all in, which nine out of ten times, the the 802 rush still kills anything, you know. So. Again, we'll get to that when we uh, get down to the trade and the, the other stuff, but we have changed a few things in the way diseases work. When a unit gets sick, it will lose 90% of its max health. If a unit has 100 HP, it will lose 90. Essentially, it goes down to 90. It doesn't actually lose 90 HP. The player can heal a unit during the disease when added the fact that the unit will remain sick until the food or wood production gets to greater than or equal to zero. So... Essentially, um, when a unit is sick, they will go up to 90. Uh, you can heal them up to 90, and actually, I noticed this, and it's actually really cool. The way that they do it currently is when a unit hits that 90 HP, they will stay sick, but they will be labeled as sick until they are f they are fully healed to that 100, 100 HP. So you might have three units that are sick, and you might heal them back to 100 HP, or to 90 HP, but they'll still be labeled as sick because you still have to heal them those extra 10, that extra 10 HP. So your your healers essentially have to stay as healers for a longer period of time. And if you get hit by a mass sickness or a mass death, your unit, your again, your your healers are going to have to spend more time treating those sick patients. Which, I mean, real like realistically, how how well do a bunch of Norse doctors know medicine about you know just a slight cough, which could actually be the plague. You know, it's kind of difficult to figure out. So, it's nice. Long story short. Long story short, it's nice. Um, it, it is no longer possible for a healer slash mender's hut to heal a unit already healed by another healer slash mender. S basically, uh, if you had multiple healing huts, which, unless you were bored, you really didn't have, uh, you couldn't have six healers healing one unit. So, what will happen now is, if you have multiple healing huts or multiple mender's huts, if a unit is sick or wounded, you're... Each healer slash mender hut will heal separate units. So if I have two uh, two healing huts and I have two units sick, each hut will heal one unit instead of both. You know those two healing huts healing only one unit and the other one possibly dying. It will now heal basically one to one, which is it's quite nice and I actually quite I like this um, this decision quite a lot. Except. The only thing that I've noticed, though, is at least as a filthy goat main, um, I usually only have one upgraded healing hut with the healer's hut tool upgraded because I'll have three healers going on one guy alone, and that's typically enough. Unless I'm playing boar, I usually don't have multiple healers slash menders, you know, to, to spare. I'm usually using my guys for other things, so it's nice, but it's not really going to do a whole lot in terms of, like, game-ending or game-breaking features. Trade victory. Prestige. So, uh, we have completely changed the way the trade victory works. To win a trade victory, you need to build a lighthouse, which is, as you can see, um, is automatically built. This is not something that a villager has to go over and build. As you can see, this lazy schmuck over here, he's just walking over. There's like, ah, eh, this giant like thing that is taller than this building just poofed into thin air. But it's okay. It's just another day in, in you know ancient Norse history. The lighthouse can be built as an extension to the longship dock or your harbor, i.e. anything that, you know, connects to the sea, the lighthouse can attach. You can only build one, though, and it does require, as the icon shows, an upgraded town hall to do so. So you can't actually do this independently. Um, you can't have multiple lighthouses going. You can only have one, and that's a very prominent thing. That And when we talk about the lighthouse, um, one of my biggest issues with it. So, the new build extension will allow you to build and gain access to great trade routes. This will allow you to send crowns to various locations and gain prestige. Um, so, essentially, you have three options. Come on, scroll down. Uh, you have three options. You have 10, 15, uh, hang on. You have, uh, this is a mess. There we go. All right. So, you have 10, 15, and 20. Essentially, or this is this is messed up because it goes it goes 10 uh, 10 25 and then 40 um, I send we'll grant you 15 send, send grant 20 procedure in exchange for 40 oh yes 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 okay so it's it's 10 15 and then 20 um, but it, it's the the amount of crowns cost essentially is where uh, the the essentially the important part is so you have three options when you you click on your lighthouse you can either send 10 gold to the mainland 25 gold or 40 essentially it just increases by 15 every time 
the problem, the biggest problem, and I'm going to spend the next couple minutes here talking about prestige and why I really don't like it, besides just the name in itself, can we call it notoriety? Because prestige is, almost sounds the exact same. Let's just start from the top. It sounds the exact same as fame. Okay, if you are a prestigious clan, that means your war chief is very famous. Or if you're very famous, your clan or your war chief is very prestigious. Why not call it notoriety? Which is basically the same thing, except unless you pull out a thesaurus or a dictionary, it's kind of different. Um, so the biggest issue with this right now is you can A, only build one so it doesn't stack. Two, your clan essentially all ends because when you are trading these resources, you don't get this, this 10 or 15 or 20 gold back. It is gone forever. So once you trade it, it is never coming back. And in the grand scheme of things, in the com in this combat meta, where by 802 you have about 20 plus enemy units knocking on your front door, you are not going to want to go for prestige. And I can almost guarantee you, you are going to see incredibly aggressive GOAT players coming out of the woodworks all of a sudden, because no GOAT player is going to want to do this. No, it, Most clans are going to want to avoid this thing, because essentially what's going to happen is when... It's a rush. The first person to hit 40 crowns wins because you can't stack this. You, unless, I mean, the only way that you can really stop it is unless the player, like, flubs up on their resources because, let's be honest here, it's a race. Because essentially, once you hit, once you get 40, there is no higher tier. And once you hit 2,000 prestige, you win. There is, you don't need an X amount of traders. You don't need whatever. Essentially, this money goes away. And I think the idea of this was to try and hinder GOAT players to not have, you know, 1.5k, 2k gold lying around and then suddenly they go for this all in and win the game. If they go for this, what's going to happen is this player is going to be forced to go all in because it costs them 40 crowns a month, 40 crowns a month, okay, to constantly be sending out this money to get this, this prestige. So what happens is it's the exact same as what happens when a player tries to go for lore victory. They go so all in to try and get lore that essentially it forces one player to sandbag and the other two to protect them. And what happens then is you have three players coming in at you with, again, 26 to 30 some odd warriors with plus God knows how much damage. And it's, it's two clans versus three. And I can guarantee you whoever's going for prestige is not going to have the money. They might have like maybe two, three hundred crowns just lying around from having, you know, plus 40 trade. But if they go for it, there's there's no there's no safety net. If you know, if I want to stop prestige, that is still, you know, and I'm, I'm halfway on prestige. There's no cover. That's that's 40 crowns a month that I've lost and I will not be getting back. And. I'm, I'm very pessimistic about how Prestige is being implemented right now, at least, because it feels like, again, it forces you to do this all-in that you really don't want to do. And if you do it, that 802 Wolf, that 802 Boar, that 802 whatever is going to come knocking on your door, and you're going to have no way to stop it. So, bug fixes. Uh, when healing Velfrenir with X tile, X different hunts, the achievement was unlocked X different times. This has been fixed. <laughs> So essentially, if you healed it like with 15 different healing huts, you would get the achievement 15 different times. When repairing a military building, players were losing a few crowns. This has been fixed. Deers now respawn normally. I don't know why, but this was like the most heated thing that I've seen on Reddit for the past two, three weeks. Cool. It's nice, you know, good thing to fix. Uh, way to way to keep up the the message, guys. The message "You are under attack" will now appear. Will now always disappear once the attack is over. When a player loses a game in multiplayer, he or she will no longer be allowed to pause it anymore. This also generated a bug where the resume the game button didn't work. There was an issue in the way resources income was displayed, and the addition of various resources didn't correspond to the flow. Um, essentially, I think that this was this is talking about how when you hit zero crowns as any clan and you are trading with another clan, you actually wouldn't generate enough crowns to get plus you know one one or two gold as upkeep and suddenly your buildings would catch fire which was always kind of fun we fixed zone is null errors uh the map size didn't work as intended you will now be able to play on very large map with any number of players essentially you can pick and spawn you can pick and choose how much space you want to have so if you have three on three you can pick a very large map if you have a one-on-one -on -one, you can pick a very large map it doesn't really matter you can pick a very large map 
long story short. So um, we're going to go back. We're going to get back to Prestige in a minute. But the important thing, and we will jump now to here, is the AI issues. So um, in the patch notes, it said, when someone leaves the game, they will be replaced by an AI after five minutes. If the player reconnects, he will take control of his, he will retake control of his clan, the AI difficulty of scale and the hostility of Northgard. This is half true. So, first off, five minutes is a long time. Um, the the AIs coming in after only five minutes, I feel like is a very p big problem. It should maybe be almost immediate or after two minutes, because if a player is gone for two minutes, I'm going to want the AI to go ahead and just start doing whatever the AI does, which, by the way, currently is ma is Rush Prestige. So they will blow up whatever thing you were trying to go for and start building trade posts and then trade to get Prestige, which, again, is gold not coming in. It's just gold going away. So... Um, a game, there was a game where only Rex, Mars Echo, and myself uh, did where essentially only Rex actually left for five minutes. It was really cool because once he left after about five minutes, it said only Rex has left and or it started off with only the Re only Rex has left the game. And then after about five minutes, it said like an AI has taken control over uh, only Rex's units and has, you know, is going to win Northgard. This partially worked. <laughs> um, once only Rex actually came back into the game, we noticed that he essentially became assimilated and infused with Sky or Skynet. Um, what essentially happened was once he actually came back in, he noticed that his a his lore had changed. He had like um, four or five different lore options, and the AI had actually picked handpicked different lores which he wasn't even near. So essentially, um, let's say for simplicity's sakes, uh, he's playing GOAT, and he went all of trading first, or like he went trading um, amenities and all that other stuff to food trade. Well, when he came back in, the AI had given him healers, or men, you know, healing, uh, better healing efficiency, and legendary heroes. Okay, wasn't, wasn't even in that, that general area with the lore tech, but the AI gave it to him. Um, another thing that we noticed was when he did come back in, the AI was actually still silently playing his game. Uh, we noticed that there was a few buildings that were built that he didn't actually build. There was a few up, few things that actually got upgraded um, while he was playing that just he didn't upgrade. Um, and the AI, was, the AI was, again, also going for a prestige victory while he was still trying to play domination. So it was, it was kind of interesting and funny to just watch him struggle against basically himself to try and regain dominance over his own clan, so... Kind of cute and interesting, but um, still, still a few things that I think the AI needs to get worked on. This one we found, actually, I found by accident when I was trying to play Stag because I I clicked random and got Stag. Um, scalds do not actually give you money uh, when you when you do value of great deeds. So essentially, when you build a Scalds or the the ha the Hall of Scalds, and you have you know you send two villages to become Scalds and you have value of great deeds. They don't actually give you the plus one gold that you get for having them. Uh, it just, it just doesn't doesn't register. And even even when you pull down in the uh, unit upkeep cost, it doesn't show them at all. So, you know, just just a small bug. It it'll Shiro Games will probably patch that out as soon as as soon as this gets released. Or I know that uh, Mars has already reported about it. So, it's it's already been probably taken care of even as I talk about it. Now. Um, this was another one that was actually not at all in the uh, patch notes, and that is the camp upgraded. Camp upgrades have been changed, and this was again not written. Um, when you upgrade a camp, and this is regardless of uh, whether or not a. Um, okay, cool. Um, sorry. When you upgrade a training camp, a shield bearer camp, or an axe thrower camp, it normally gives you ten. Now it only gives you five. So essentially what has happened is when you go into an engagement, the units are still the exact same, but the damage is different. So essentially you have longer game or longer longer engagements essentially, which is which is good. I, I enjoy watching warriors, you know, slug each, slug it out for a couple minutes. The problem is the combat hasn't been fixed at all. Um, the units still do this for a couple seconds, but now with it only being 5% instead of 10, this just goes on for a little bit longer instead of just... And then it's done. Um, 
there there's still no balancing which i'm again i'm very concerned of especially as we draw closer to release date uh this is a glaring and concerning a big concern that i at least personally see with how this game is being released we do have the confirmation of dedicated servers within the next week but if you don't have a balanced combat system when players newer players come in all they're going to see is this and they're going to go how do i even control this how do i even micro it there's there's no way to control it or no way to really enjoy it and i'm very concerned about that so um i know that at least rushers i've i've heard from false underscore and he said he was really glad to see that it's gone from 10 to 5 because essentially this allows for more early game uh all-ins to be even more successful because now you don't have to spend as much but i mean again really all it does is prolong the engagements and so back to the back back snap back to reality and here we are with prestige because um again this was my this was my biggest thorn with this i i do like the boar clan up the upgrades or changes i do like this i mean scalds changing combat changing it's fine it happens you know this is still early access and i know that these devs are working very very hard to make this game the best that it can possibly be and that's why i'm being very patient with this but prestige I am very adamantly against um, for the biggest reason that essentially what's going to happen okay you have here's the here's what I think the intent is the intent is to force players or to to incentivize players to go for something other than these early all-ins to win um, it I think at least I think false gave me the rough estimate it takes you about 16.7 months to at 40 percent at at minus 40 to win the the prestige that is assuming you start and end at 40 obviously there's a little bit more of a wind up in the end so let's just say it takes you about 17 months total to uh win the win prestige that is more than enough time for a wolf a boar a bear anything under the sun to come over and kill you and so it creates this paradigm of, do I want to try and go for this goat all in? Here, let me sh shuffle over a little. Do I want to go for this this prestige that will cost me essentially my entire economy, all my units, and all my trade? Or could I just go for more all ins? Because what what incentive do I have to sacrifice my my units, my economy, and my time, and my defense? for a possible trade victory or I can use that plus 40 a month to create a giant army with the upgrades and everything to go killing to go kill the guy that probably only has a few upgraded towers okay so I'm very again the in the actuality I can see where they're trying to go with it but my biggest concern is this feels a lot like with the the old wisdom rushes it it's doable it's definitely doable but you're not going to be able to do as much as you really think you can when you actually have the pressure of those high skilled high skilled players coming in with at 802. So um, that was pretty much everything I really wanted to talk about. I'm sorry that this video kind of ran pretty long um, in comparison to some of the other ones. I'm just I'm very this patch has me has me sweating really um, because I was hoping. By the way, we didn't see a goat nerf. I'm a I'm a filthy goat player myself, and I still feel like goat needs some sort of rework or rebalance, especially with sheep. Um, and I, there was a lot of really good suggestions in the think tank, which I was kind of hoping would be added, but you know, what's what's a man to do? Um, there was there was no real c combat at all. Uh, they they nerfed boar. Cool. We still have wolf that can all in, and good high school high skilled raven players can still merc rush. Um, and I feel like Prestige, all it's going to really do is it's going to tell GOAT players, hey, instead of going for trade, now you can go for all-ins. <laughs> and so instead of having a boar wolf all-in, you now have a, a GOAT boar bear all-in. And uh, the combo just continues. So um, that's really it for me, guys. Thank you to everyone that was here for this video. Um, what do you guys think that needs to be really focused on? I I think that this, like I said, this, this uh, patch has me sweating, but... There's always a grand plan at the bottom of, at the end of the, uh, or there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and maybe I'm just wearing some really dark sunglasses. So, uh, with that, I hope you guys have a good day, good afternoon, good night. I will see all you guys next time, and um, see you soon. Bye bye.